Welcome to YouTube Excel Lookup Function Series number 13. Hey, if you want to download this workbook and follow along, click on my YouTube channel, then click on my college website link and download the workbook Excel Lookup Function Series 1 to 15. You are not going to believe what we're going to do in this one. We're going to use the index and max mat mat function together to look up a shipping value from not one, not two, but three tables. Now, we saw how to do this in an earlier uh, video, but part of what we had to do was calculate on our fingers. So we want to do it the full automatic way. And what that means is we're going to have to use the index function and three different match functions. All right, here's the setup. You want to figure out shipping unit per cost. Now we have one table, this is for customer type 10. This second table, customer type 20. And a third table, customer type 30. Now we have different prices, but along each row headers and column headers, we have region and sh um, shipping method. They have to be exactly the same for each table. Now what I've done for simplicity is I've taken these names since they're the same and pasted them right here. Then I took these names and pasted them right here because we're going to have to use the match function. If our invoice, say we're setting up an invoice, says West, Truck, and Customer 20 Type, we want this function to automatically go over to this table, which is the Customer 20 Type, go down to the, uh, over to, down to the West, row header, and then go over to the truck column header and find that intersecting value. So we're going to get 13.5 cents. We want to do it automatically. So if we have this uh, range of regions, this range of shipping methods, and the customer uh, type here with these three lists of names, that will make it a lot easier. Then you can actually name these three lists, have them on a separate sheet, and on the uh, sheet that you have the invoice, we'll set up this cool little formula. Well, what we're going to do first is name this. So I'm going to highlight this and come up to the name box. Let me see if I can make this a little bit bigger. That's not very big. That's much bigger there. Now I'm going to highlight this right here and name this region. Enter. I'm going to name the, uh, highlight this and name this ship M for shipping method. Enter. Be sure and hit enter once you highlight a range. And over here I'm going to click up here and type customer T for customer type. Now, data validation. We've seen how to do this in lots of other uh, videos, but you'd set up data validation by the keyboard shortcut that works in all versions, Alt-D-L. You say allow list, and I did this before I named them so I have this, but you would put the name there, boom, and that would create a drop down, because you want to have a drop down on your invoice. Then, it's a simple matter of creating this formula. All right, let's see how this is going to work. Let's see if I can make this even bigger. All right, we're going to have to use the index and one, two, three match functions. All right, ready? Equals index. Now, we're going to do an array. I'm sorry, reference. Tell it the row number. Tell it the column number. And tell it the area number. Now, the trick for multiple tables in reference is you got to separate each uh, area for the tables with commas and include it all in parentheses. So watch this. I'm going to say equals index, and in parentheses, I'm going to go get my first table. I'm going to scroll over and do table number one right here, which is that range right there. Then I'm going to put a comma, and I have to get my second. Notice there's a green parentheses right there, and all the separated areas have to be separated by column, uh, commas. I'm going to scroll over and get my second table. And then comma, you can see it's starting to emerge up here also. So I have area one, area two. Now I'm going to get my third area right here. And then comma, uh, not comma, but close parentheses. All right, look at this construction here. Here it is, index. But instead of just a single array, we're using this reference one here, area one, area two, area three. 
And they all have to be the same size, too, separated by commas. Now it's simply putting in our row, column, and area using match. Ready? Comma, and we'll do our row. M-A-T-C-H. We need our lookup value. And that is going to be our region right here. So you could set these uh, areas up at the top of the invoice with data validation, right? So I have that match for that. I'm going to look that up. And where? The name region. It needs to know the lookup value and then the lookup array. Now, I forgot my name that I named that range. So the F3 key will give me a list of names. Oh, yeah, it's region. So I'm going to double click it. And then comma. And we definitely want exact match for all three of these. Right? See, that match right there is going to give us the row number based on whatever we put here. Now we do a comma, and now we do column, and it's the same match. Open parentheses. The lookup value, oh yeah, shipping method right there. That cell that's based on data validation. Comma, I forgot my name, so I'm going to hit F3 key, F3 key. And that, of course, is uh, shipping shipping M. Wow, I almost forgot my name and I thought I wasn't supposed to. And then zero because we want an exact match. Now look at what we have so far. We have our index. We have the three, range, uh, three areas. We got the match that's going to give us the row number. And now this match, which will give us the column number. Finally, we need to do the area. So I'm going to comma. And we're going to do a match here too. The lookup is this. Comma and the lookup array, well, I forgot what it was again, so I'm going to hit my F3 key, shipping method, so that's ship M, double click, and then comma, zero, close parentheses, and now we have our reference, which is bloop, and our match that's going to deliver a row, our match that's going to deliver a column, and our match that's going to deliver one, two, or three that will represent table one, two, three. Close parentheses and control enter. Not available. We better see what the problem is. One way to evaluate a problem, in fact, the best way is to go to Formula Evaluator. I'm going to go up in 2007, go to Formulas, Formula Auditing, Evaluate Formula. In earlier versions, you go to the Tools menu and Formula Auditing. I'm going to use the keyboard shortcut, Alt-T-U-F, Alt-Tough. Now I'm going to click this. It's underlined there. Let's see if we can find our problem. Click all those ranges there. It seems to think that's OK. Now it's going on to the match. So it's looking under West, under Region, and it finds a 2. Then I click Evaluate. It's looking for Truck. Looking Shipping Method, I bet you that's the problem. Let's see if we click. Oh, no, it got the 2, which it is the 2. I'm going to click Evaluate, Customer Type and not available. So it's that third match that caused us the problem. So I'm going to click Close. I'm going to click in the cell and hit F2. How about the F2? I typed a 2 there and hit Escape. F2. Come over here. Oh, look at that. We have a shipping method and a shipping method. So I'm going to highlight this, hit F3. And it is not shipping method. It's customer type. So I'm going to double click that. Let's see, I got my fingers crossed, control enter, and it returns a 13.5 cents. Now let's try the whole thing all together. So this is a function. And just look at the beauty of that. Look, we have, oh, I can't look at the beauty of it, it's too big. But we can look it up here. We have an index, we have match, match, and match. Since we set up that Auto, to work automatically based on our data validation, I'm simply going to click the drop down and try Northwest. It says 12 points. So I'm going to say truck instead of truck. I'm going to say rail. And customer type, I'm going to say 10. So it should be Northwest rail customer 10. When we go check this over here in our table, Northwest rail customer type, and little formula here. Here in the invoice, what if we had weight here? And this thing had 100 pounds. And then just for trickery, we could control 1, go up to the number, and we'll select uh, this number format here with uh, zero decimal places. Come down to Custom. And up here, right after the zero, we'll put space, quote, LBS, period, end quote. That's a way of adding 
words as formatting, but they won't actually be in the cell. Then we can use that input number in a formula. Click OK. So we have 100 pounds. If the package weighs 50 pounds, we put 50 pounds there. Notice when you click in this cell, it's still a 50 there. So we can use it here because that's what got returned here with the index and match is um, per pound. So let's go ahead and try it. I'm going to say F2. And right at the end, I'm going to say times, and then this 50. And there you go. There's our um, charge for shipping. We saw the wonderful match and index working together. We saw names. We saw data validation. And we saw that groovy little custom formatting trick, all to make a cool invoice. All right, we'll see you next. Look up trick.